Let's move on to Elon Musk. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. We brought you previously the story of $1 million checks being handed out at these events every single day until election day by Elon Musk. You now have the Philadelphia DA, Larry Krasner. Those of you might remember him from uh, some of the previous uh, like consternations around Soros DA or whatever, he survived a, a election there. But he is now suing to halt the $1 million giveaway. That was after uh, Josh Shapiro, the governor of the state, said that law enforcement should look into it. The suit filed in Philadelphia Common Pleas Court, first legal action there, and uh, what it comes down down to is it grants Krasner, the prosecutor, the opportunity to basically investigate, to quote, take on Musk and to block this $1 million type giveaway. The thing is, though, is that currently they said that they have uh, already committed to extending this through election on November 5. They're claiming that this must be stopped immediately. The background of it is twofold. One is that they're basically alleging it's an illegal lottery scheme to influence the election. Right. So people should go watch maybe our previous segment on this, but it all comes down to whether both if illegal lottery and two, if it is a coercion to register to vote. Because the current statute of the U.S. Criminal Code says it is blatantly illegal to pay people to register them for vote. He is claiming, well, you have to be registered to vote to be able to sign this petition. Mm -hmm. This petition is in favor of what is it, the First Amendment or free speech or I think it's whatever. First and Second Amendment. Or First and Second Amendment. Okay, fine. But, so if it was just that, then okay. But because of the preconditions for being able to sign the petition, you have effectively created a new lottery scheme to get around voter registration. It is an actually interesting case yeah. in terms of uh, how these laws uh, should be applied and and the actual interpretation. It's somewhere in the gray area, as I understand it. Um, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I think at the federal level, it's actually more clear because there is a federal election law yes. prohibition on inducing people to register using money favors, whatever. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, election lawyers seem to feel like uh, this pretty clearly meets that standard definition. Who knows how it gets, you know, right. litigated. The, the catch here for Krasner is that he has to operate on Pennsylvania state law, yes. which does not have a prohibition against inducing people to register to vote. So that's why he's using the, like, you're lottery. running an illegal lottery and not following the rules. Like, only the state can run a lottery, number one. Number two, you're not even following, like, the legal requirements for running a lottery. So that's the direction he's going in with this lawsuit. So we'll see where, you know, where this goes and uh, if it has any impact. The I know when we looked at the federal uh, law, the punishment was like a ten thousand dollar fine. So mm -hmm. I'm sure, Elon's so it, not going to be sweating that. Kind of doesn't really matter. Uh, not going to be sweating that anyway. too much. Um, uh, yeah, we've been wanting to talk though a little bit about. So, Elon is running a significant part of the ground game for Trump, the field operation, you know, that goes and knocks on doors and tries to turn out voters early, et cetera, et cetera, and tracks them, how much are they supporting Trump, or are they on the other team's side, et cetera, et cetera. So the sort of like classic field canvassing operation, a lot of that has fallen to Elon Musk's super PAC, um, specifically in the state of Pennsylvania. Guardian has been digging into the um, reality of the situation, the FKC of this situation, and they had previously reported, you can put this up on the screen, that um, CounterPoints covered this briefly, that they are appear to be getting a lot of quote unquote fraudulent door knocks, meaning that they're paying canvassers to go out and knock doors for the Trump campaign. And that actually almost always runs into problems because these are not people who are true believers. They're just, they're trying to get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of ways that you can cheat and make it seem like you're knocking on those doors, but really you're just filling in, in your app like, yeah, I totally talked to Mary Smith and she's on team Trump and don't worry, she voted already, even though you're just sitting at home in your living room or standing on the street or whatever, because I don't know if you guys have ever gone out canvassing, but it is a little bit like it's, you know, you, it, it takes weird. a certain personality, right, to go and knock on a stranger's door and like proselytize to yeah. them about Even a candidate. if they're on your side, I mean, look, I don't know about you, for me, I just stare at my ring camera until somebody leaves, regardless <laughs> whether it's politics. Uh, Nobody door comes to my door don't, where I live. Please don't knock on my door. <laughs> I live in the Is middle it, of nowhere. I should, if I really had the strength, I would put the no solicitors sign up, which, but that's a whole other level of Karen. You don't want to go there. So in any case, Already indications that some 25% roughly of the door knocks that are being, you know, conducted on behalf of Elon Super PAC are probably fraudulent. And now we've got new documentation. We can put this up on the screen. Guardian got their hands on a uh, video that is meant to show other canvassers for Musk's Super PAC 
how to cheat, specifically using like GPS <laughs> spoofing. <laughs> And this went out to hundreds of canvassers, like, listen, here's how you do it. You pull up the map, you pull up this app, you click on the house, then it thinks that you're in the place. Because obviously these um, canvassing operations, they are aware of the fact that people like to cheat on this and not actually go and knock on the doors. So they put in place mechanisms like GPS tracking to try to make sure you're actually knocking on the doors that you say that you're knocking on. And um, this is a video how-to guide of how to get around that. We don't know how widely it was disseminated, how many people were using these tricks, et cetera, but another indication that perhaps the door knocks are not happening in the way that the Trump people would like them yes. to be happening. It's funny, in the video, they have a quote from it. They say, okay, so here's the part that matters. You click the house you wanna do, not home for about five houses, so you click the not home shit, left literature, boom, and then you wanna put a survey in. This is the survey, you click available for survey. This is what I do, I click definitely yes, Donald Trump, early vote, no, end survey, it's pretty much that simple. So they're telling you not only how to do the GPS spoofing, but then also how to fake the data in a way that doesn't flag that you're fraudulently mentoring yeah, this This is the problem with outsourcing the ground game, actually, and that's gonna be right. the biggest one. You know, I, I'm surprised by the decision from them because I know a lot of people who worked at the RNC over the years, and one of the things that they were always so proud of was the preeminence of their ground game, of in uh, investment in their technology, of door knocking. This was a big story in 2020. What happened in 2020 is a Trump campaign, the RNC had a joint fund, so it basically was a joint operation, and they invested a lot in technology, obviously door knocking was less during COVID, but this time by outsourcing it to Elon, this also demonstrates the problem with the pay to play model yeah. of basically paying people to canvas. Because if you think about it too, you know, canvassers, you gotta be pretty bought in. Like it's a shitty job. And then yeah, you can pay them to do it, but that leads to, even if you knock on your door and there's not enthusiasm, you're not engaging with them, True. it's gonna be a lot less likely to come out. And then you got people who are just in this for a free paycheck, you know, basically out there. This is classic in every election. There's just group people, you know, like seasonal workers who are just always out there looking for a buck of like, oh, you want me to go hand out signs? Cool, you know, $10 an hour, easy money. And so <laughs> I think you could see some of that there. But if, if you do see a Pennsylvania law, this could certainly come, I mean, especially within the margin, this would be a big problem. And this yeah. would be a, a lesson for elections. Do not outsource this stuff outside of your control because, you know, even with the super PAC, because of the way that the laws work, you can't talk to each other directly. You can't cross off, you know, yeah, your right. own numbers. Like you have a lot less institutional ability to see where you're at there in PA. This presumes that any of this stuff actually matters, which I still remain skeptical. Yeah, I yeah, think whether that's, does game even matter? Probably fair. not. This is one of those stories we wanted to cover just to put a pin in it. If at the end of the day, the Trump people don't turn out their people yeah. at the same level, because we do know, and Weigel confirmed this for us too, he was on the ground door knocking mm -hmm. with um, Democrats in Wisconsin. He said the Trump side has a much less organized operation. The Democrats are much more organized in terms of their field canvassing turnout. You know, field organizers claim it can move the election result by a couple of points. So, you know, if that's if that's the story post election day, then we may look back at this and say like, oh, this was more of a problem yes. for the Trump people than maybe it seemed at the time and perhaps don't outsource a key function of the campaign. Then again, to your point, it's not like the Trump campaign has ever taken canvassing all that seriously, mm. and they've done pretty well in the past. Exactly. So. That's why I always come, you know, pol these political consultants, they want to convince you that these swing state uh, ads matter. They want to say ground game. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I buy it anymore. I think in the nationalization, the celebritization of politics, I think it's all just, you know, up to the national media, the vibe, uh, you know, things that could, like, for example, if Kamala loses the election, how much of it is Kamala Harris, how much of it is just Joe Biden 2021, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, probably a huge part. Was there anything you could really do? Probably not. Same with terms of Trump. Maybe the election was cooked on the day of January 7th, right? For Donald Trump. Could be. It's certainly possible, Could be. right? Could be. Right. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show, ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show, help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.